Hi guys, so we're back again with another tutorial uh, and today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to create a ASP.NET um, core application with Entity Framework, Migrations and how to set that up basically on a core application so right here I have one that I've already done already but I would like to go through the step completely with you guys so basically a lot of guys have been asking me how to do this and stuff like that there the best thing you want to do is with migrations is you don't want to make it based part on code first uh, chance so you don't want code first to handle the migrations you want to basically do the migrations yourself so you want manual migrations and you want to do um, a connection to your uh, to your SQL server so basically this is how you do it so I'm gonna start off with a new project right now um, so I'm gonna call core application web application uh, let's see that's fine so I'm gonna call it maybe test uh, let's call it citizen tutorial uh, citizen ASP at core code first tutorial sorry for the long name guys but there's so many projects in my um, drive that it just keeps going off so I'm gonna create an a API um, I'm not gonna create a web application right now I'll create a web API core application uh, I think that's fine SP internet core uh, you can do five let's do five ASP internet core five hope anything is not different on that one anyway so we have a blank application here um, let's build this uh, basically so I'm not gonna run this application uh, can run it uh, if you want to see it so I'm gonna run it right now just so you guys can see it but I hate running .NET applications like this to take a long time to make videos but I'm gonna run it through one time so you guys can see um, the API and basically it's just the basic weather API with with um, all of the swagger stuff and in it and stuff like that there. So ASP.NET 5 um, also comes with swagger and all of that there in it. So it basically makes it much more simpler to to run, run things. Anyway, cool. So basically what you want to do is you want to start up um, your application at uh, by saying you want to install certain things so you're gonna to go to manage and basically what I want to do let's see what's installed here already ah oh, okay cool okay so I want to have entity framework which is the core one so Microsoft entity framework core and that's five the latest table version I'm gonna install this it might take a while to install this and then we go I also want Microsoft Entity Framework SQL Server as you can see I have my server here and I want to connect it now I'm using Windows authentication for this one um, you can use obviously you can just change the string to whatever you're using anyway but I'm going to show you how to do that and I also want Microsoft Entity Framework um, core.tools this will allow for migrations on my project and manual migrations I might say on my project the reason you want manual migrations is you actually want to see things happening before you even run the application so and if there's any problems with the, any of your changes or anything you just don't want to run the application and mess up data so it's best to see it before you even start doing everything and I like manual migrations because then you can just move it around and then you know exactly where things are um, and it gives you a more sense of control over your code right so now that we've installed that there 
I'm going to create a data model. A data model folder. In my data model folder, I'm going to have, mm, I'd say, a citizen class, which is going to represent one table in my database. So I just want to show you guys one, of course. Um, so I already have a, <coughs> basically, a table here. So I'm just going to copy this one there. I try to do employee one, and I decided, ah, citizen is more. Uh, unique. I haven't seen somebody doing one with Citizen One before, so I said, "Ah, let's try it." Um, anyway, so leaving that aside, I have now a Citizen model there. So basically, this is just basically going to be my table. I want to show you how to connect this table and create this table using Code First now. And what you also want your in your is you want like a data connection string in here, and in here so. Basically, I've already written one that I like here. Um, the reason why I write, write it this way is because I like to save time, a lot of time, uh, by doing these things already and just copying the code uh, when necessary and just putting them in because it saves me a ton of time. Also, I believe it saves everyone a part of time because it takes a lot of time to upload my videos and stuff. Anyway, what I've done here is I've put a um, basically a store value into app settings JSON, and I've named it under the conditions data and in data is connection strings because I want if I wanted multiple strings then yeah cool and default connection. Now I'm using persistent ground controller, so it's it's, it's the same URL that you would use to um, basically connect to your SQL Server on any other application. Um, I'm just basically using a URL that I have that's connected to Windows authentication and basically the one that's connected here. And as you can see, I have no databases here right now. So I'm going to show you guys how to start this code first sequence. Now, ignore this application for now, and I'm only looking at this, this is an API core one, right? So this one that we're talking about. Because I'm just pulling code from that one to show you guys what and where to to go with. Alright, so once we got that there, we already got a connection in there. Um, what we need to do now is establish a now in the startup. We have to establish um, services in the startup for SQL Server, and basically it's just one line of code that you just gotta add in, and that's basically this here. And that's actually services dot add db context the data context use SQL Server. That's that's coming SQL Server is coming from ASP.NET Core, and here's my data strings connection. The way I the way I put it is in the JSON format, and you know that when you're getting configurations from the JSON app settings, you gotta put a um um a colon um, there uh, between the uh, inner parts of the JSON. Now I don't have a data context here, so I'm going to create a data context. So basically, um, I'm going to go to my data model and I'm going to say add a class and I'm going to call it a data context model. So I've got my data context there and cool, I think everything is going off now so let me just see what I have here my data context model is there basically there and cool now in my data context model I'm gonna inherit DB context and in DB context I'm gonna inherit Data context of DB. What is it? Um, I think it's DB settings. Yep, there is it. There we go. I'm just gonna copy that over. 
I'm gonna look up stuff now. Yeah, so it's DP context options into there and into the base. Let's make this more neater for you guys to see. So you can pause at any time and then um, look at the code. But basically, all you gotta do is that, and then you got your public DB set of citizen. That's my class, and I'm calling it citizens, and I'm making it get and uh, set. So now that I've set up code first, I need to know that it works basically the way I want. And I also want to add my custom my manual migrations into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically add custom migrations into this, this, this application right here. So let's just build this application again. And you notice that I am keep saving all the time. That's because I want to always, if, if something happens, maybe the lights go off or there's a power cut or some sort of thing like that there. Um, I can basically save my data the way I needed to save my data. Now basically I'm not going to run this application, it's just to show you how to connect everything in there. Um, now I'm going to do a, remember when you're doing, I'm going to do the migrations now for this, yes, the initial migration and show you how you guys doing it. So right now you can see, still see that there's nothing happening here, right? So that's cool. Uh, to do migrations now, you gotta select your your API at the top there. Make sure if you're using multiple projects, you're selecting your API. If you're running multiple projects at the same time, just select your API one, and ensure that your package console also has your API one. If you don't have a data context outside of it, now what you wanna do is say add migration, right? And say this is the initial create of the migration so the initial create will basically create whatever data you have in there now right and let's see could not load xnb ensure that it is referenced with the code first okay cool so i i've referenced the wrong thing so i'm referencing the right thing so you see now why i'm saying your default project needs to be hand in hand with where the data context is sitting so your api at the top and then here where your data context is sitting in which project so cool let's do this again and i hope you guys are seeing at the bottom here let me see if i can try and bring this up for you guys yeah so there we go so i added my add dash migration all small all small letters and i'm doing an initial create cool right awesome Ish initial create is starting cool now what happens here with the initial create is basically um, builds up my SQL coding in the background to create my uh, the stuff. So if you really want to see how it works, here's how the migration works in that in that particular say. And what I want to do to this now is I want to upgrade the day update the database here to so see if I'm actually connected via code first now. So that if I make any changes in my basic uh, commands uh, or my model I'm able to see it in, in almost instantly without running the app so I'm going to update this here and what this should do is now create a database in my database there we go so now if I open up my database I see my citizens and voila Now, some of you guys might have another problem where you have two data contexts. Now, in order to solve that there, all you got to do is just add an extra piece of code here, which is dash context, and the name of your data context. It can be employer context, it can be uh, lazy context, I don't care what, it, what you call your data context uh, model, right? Uh, or your DB context model. But basically to find the right more context that you want to attach it to if you have multiple in the same project this is what you would do and you'd basically say okay cool and you would hit enter and go straight to it um, I'm not gonna do that now because that's gonna be unnecessary code. the reason okay I'll do it for you guys and show you what I mean so test and that will create a test one now the reason the good thing about this migration is it's showing me actually if I really need this here which I don't 
so I can just go there and delete this this migration because I don't really need it and I can rebuild well it succeeded and now I go back to my database even year two if it still gives you errors and stuff here in this point all you got to do is say data context well mine is called data context yours can be called anything all right so there's no changes currently in there but obviously if I needed a change to be in there now what if I wanted to drop off a I wanted to drop off data but so I say save say add my migration now and say removed D O B data but cool watch this removed the database from there and now as you can see it's still it's still there but I need to upgrade my database now succeeded let's see what is now sitting in the citizens table cool see it works migration works now when you do this here you don't necessarily have to say um, update database so once you add your migration in then you run your application it'll basically do that for you so suppose now I went back here and I said um, uh, I wanted to add public string uh, test All right and I put a get and a set and I save All right adding my migration now I'm saying it's a test don't worry about it my bad uh, I'm saying it's a test and I run my application now here's the thing let's check if this has changed hasn't right this is the reason why you have to do manual migrations because it will only change if the model has been touched for the first time if you understand what I'm what I'm going for so it will only change if the model has been touched for the first time so if I had the model in here with like a notoriety or something and I'm getting something from it so suppose I'm getting something from my model which is basically um, so I can go do this sort of thing and say get something from here in the next episode I'll show you how to do gets and stuff like that there but basically this this uh, episode or this tutorial is basically just telling you how to set up migrations how to set up code first in dotnet entity core 5 thank you for joining us and we'll see you again in the next video Cheers, guys. Bye.